Hello my lovely and welcome to my channel. In today's video I will share with you the top things to see, eat and do in Paris. We're talking about the top three pain au chocolat, the top three macarons, the top three coffee, the top sites to see and a few little suggestions of itineraries you can do especially if you're going there for a short amount of time these are the best of the best the things that i would really recommend you go eat see and do while you are in paris so i split the video in specific sections so make sure to check the different chapters you can fast forward ahead to the ones that are more relevant to you and i will have a more detailed blog post with everything and all the addresses and more detailed detailed explanations for everything so i will leave the link to that in the description box as well but if you're ready let's talk about one of my favorite cities paris <laughs> first things first coffee so i had read about this beforehand but finding good coffee is in paris is actually hard and I agree. I am a big coffee drinker, I love my coffee, and they weren't great. However, these are the top three coffees that I had that are actually worth it, and they're actually really tasty. So if you're a coffee drinker, here are the top three coffee places if you're in Paris. So the first one is called Coutume Cafe, and there's a few of them, there's a few locations around. The one that I went to is within La Grande Épicerie, which is a specific, really cool grocery store, which I will talk about in a neck in another section however I went to the Coutume Cafe inside La Grande Épicerie and the, I had a mocha there and honestly it was one of the best mochas I've ever had I'm usually picky with my mocha I like to have it you know that it actually tastes like coffee but a good chocolate as well and this really hit the spot it was really really good so I would definitely recommend Coutume Cafe the pastry we had I don't even remember it my mom got it and I had a bite of it wasn't memorable but the coffee was really really good so if you're looking for a good cup of joe Kuchim Cafe is a good one. The next spot that stands out in terms of its coffee specifically is the Hoxton Hotel. This is something my sister wanted to go to and honestly I'm so happy we did. The ambiance, everything about it was amazing and I'll talk about the dessert in another section, in the dessert section, but the coffee was really good as well. The whole vibe was really good. If you do go to the Hoxton Cafe, make sure to walk around the hotel, take a look because it's really like a beautiful beautiful hotel to, to just visit overall and if you want to grab a coffee make sure to plan to sit there for like an hour and just take it easy relax take a break off your feet but the coffee was also really good the dessert was also really good but we'll talk about that in another section but the coffee at the Hoxton cafe highly recommend I think I got a soy milk latte or flat white actually I got a flat white at the Hoxton cafe Hoxton hotel it was really really good now the next coffee that was worthwhile and is maybe a little bit more accessible because there's a lot of stores around Paris is Pierre Hermé. Pierre Hermé is known for their macarons, which they're also really good. I actually like them better than the more common La Durée. However, the coffee was actually decent at Pierre Hermé. So if ever you're on the go and you know you can't go to Coutume Café or anything else, Pierre Hermé actually has good coffee. We sat down, had a pastry, had of course macarons, and had a coffee, and it was really, really good. So that's a definitely a recommendation that I would have. Even though it's a chain, I generally tend to steer away from chains generally speaking. Pierre Hermé, even though it's a chain, there's a lot of locations in Paris. The coffee is good, the macarons are worth it, and the pastries are really worth it. So definitely check it out. And the last one that I wanted to mention in this section, which is not quite a coffee, but it's worth the mention because it's really, really good, is Angelina. I'm sure that you probably have already heard of it if you've done any research on Paris. However, Angelina Paris is known for their decadent, decadent hot chocolate. It is amazing it's like it's like if you're a chocoholic you have to have the angelina hot chocolate now you don't have to sit there although inside angelina is really beautiful to to, to experience although I never, i've never sat there i've just walked around but the lineup tends to be really long so here's a little pro tip if you skip the line and just tell them you're going to go to the counter if you walk in turn right and you'll see the counter of pastries where you can order your pastries as well but you can also get a hot chocolate there and not wait the long lineup that there always is for people that want to sit inside Angelina. In terms of the pastries, I've had a few of them and they're good but I don't know if I would wait an hour in line to sit there and eat. What my sister, my mom and I did was to grab a few to go and we ate it at the park. 
just as fun and i did obviously sneak upstairs go to the washroom quickly which is also really cute and i was able to enjoy my pastries outdoors but you have to try the hot chocolate i'm telling you if you're chocoholic the Angelina hot chocolate is really worth going to get. Now let's move on to pastries and dessert because of course we're in Paris, we're gonna eat all the pastries and desserts, of course. I have a separate section for the macaron and a separate section for pain chocolat because those are their own little entities <laughs> themselves however for specifically for pastries and dessert the first recommendation that i have is the hoxton hotel i mentioned the coffee before the dessert was really good we had a madeleine which is a very typical french dessert and over oh my god my mouth is watering thinking about it they poured over this like praline chocolate sauce over it i shared it with my sister i should have probably got one separate it was so good the madeleine is kind of like a vanilla cake but in a specific shape don't quote me on this, but it's really, really good. It's like a very dense, moist, vanilla-flavored cake. And then you have the chocolate praline over it. It was just amazing. So in terms of pastries and desserts, I would definitely recommend overall Hoxton Hotel as a spot for you to visit during your trip as a little sit down for an afternoon coffee and dessert and just to enjoy the venue because it's so beautiful and it's just really aesthetic. Get a few shots. It's just really worthwhile the second base pastry slash dessert that i wanted to mention was a bit an, of a unexpected one because i hadn't planned to go there or just we walked by it and we stopped is biscuiterie montmartre so this is in montmartre where you have the beautiful church there i'm sure you've seen it but biscuiterie montmartre have amazing cookies and again unexpected didn't really think we'd go there i stopped they give you one to taste on the spot and they're usually warm which is just like amazing but the cookies there are really amazing so i would definitely recommend you stop there stock up you can get little packs and you can bring it back home with you but that was really um, an unexpected find that i hadn't even researched that i would really recommend that you try out and the last thing that i would recommend you eat in paris in terms of a dessert is having a crepe on the street this was something i was very excited to do i had been to paris before and every time i go it's something that i just do because it's just i don't know it just screams paris to me um, is to have a crepe on the street so I had I had a few so ultimately for me they kind of they all kind of taste standard taste the same but it's just also kind of the experience you there's little vendors in different places the one that I had was in Montmartre and then I had another one close to the Eiffel Tower pretty sure I had a third one but I can't remember it where but it's basically like these little booths in the street that you can go stop get your crepe you can get um, sugar and lemon which is a really common one sugar and cinnamon you can get with jam I always get mine with Nutella because I'm chocoholic and I love my Nutella so I always get my Nutella crepe so that's a really Paris thing to do that I would really encourage you to try it's warm it's fun you eat it I don't know it's just a really fun experience so I would really encourage you to do that as well and the last pastry slash dessert worth the mention um i mentioned it before as well is pierre hermé they're known for their macaron i like it better than naturé and what i like is that they also switch out the flavors they get seasonal flavors as well they make really fun creations so in the summertime they have special flavors for this summer it's just really fun and i do like the taste a lot better the texture is a little bit more fresh i find than naturé and the flavors are a little bit more unique so i would definitely recommend stopping at pierre hermé to get a macaron on the go with your coffee or to sit down and have a pastry i think we had a chocolate pistachio croissant and another kind of pastry i'll, I'll leave the picture in the videos um for you to see um but they were really good as well so i would definitely recommend that and it's more of a chain so they're more accessible for you to find let's move on to pan chocolat so in this trip we were there for 12 days and my sister and mom and i challenged ourselves <laughs> to eat a pan chocolat and a macaron every single day we often ended up sharing it anyway um, but we wanted to try as many as we could because there are so many bakeries in paris it's incredible at every corner there's a new one so it's sometimes hard to figure out which ones to eat at but these are the top three pan chocolat that i ate that were really worth it the first one that stands out is the one from the bakery called French Bastards. Now it's a little bit farther out, it's not as central as all the other bakeries that you could find, but it's really worth it. If you're doing Canal Saint Martin, it's kind of in that area, so you can start your day at the French French Bastards and then make your way to Canal Saint Martin, which we didn't end up doing because we didn't have enough time. But regardless, French Bastard Bakery was 
incredible. It was to the point where I like would bite into the pain au chocolat and a, a sign of a good pain au chocolat is how flaky it actually is. The crust has to be golden and really crispy and inside it has to be like super flaky. I bit into it and like flakes flew everywhere. It was buttery but not too buttery. It was just incredible. I'm telling you, it's the best pound sugar I've had in a very long time. Definitely worth the trek. And we tried a few other of their of their other pastries as well. It's really good. And you know it's good when there's a lineup of locals and it's not in a very touristy area per se. So you know it's a good bakery when there's locals that are going there. So definitely recommend taking the trip to get a pound chocolat from there. The second pound chocolat that I want to mention is maybe a little bit of a surprise, and even once for me as well but it's actually from a grocery store now it's not a, it's not a grocery store like a typical grocery store that you could think of it's a specialty grocery store but it's also huge i will talk a little bit more about it in another section because it's something i would really recommend you go visit it's called la grande épicerie i believe there's two locations of them but it's a really big grocery store but it's a specialty grocery store with a lot of specialty food there's a lot of like it's huge there's a lot of things but anyway there's also a, a on the go takeout set section where you can get food and there's a bakery as well. It's also where I had my favorite coffee that I mentioned in the first section, Kuchin Cafe. But the pain chocolat was surprisingly really good. I had one on the last day because I was like, you know what, last hurrah, I have to have another pain chocolat. We were doing a little picnic and I decided I'm going to grab a I like when they have the mini ones, but I grabbed the mini pain chocolat. Honestly, it was really good. I was very surprised. At that point, I had a lot and I figured it's from a grocery store. I don't think it's going to be amazing. It really was. It really was worth it. And if you're there as well to just get other things as well, I would really recommend trying their pastries because they were really good. The last one that I wanted to mention is Boulangerie des Invalides. Now, this is probably not a very common one that you will find. However, on our first day, we dropped off our stuff because our, our hotel room wasn't ready and we just walked all the way to the Eiffel Tower how it was about a 20 minute walk and on the way I mean we hadn't slept online it was an overnight flight that we had and there was you know time difference etc so I was a bit delirious but I really wanted a pain chocolat to start off the trip really strong so within an hour of arriving I had already had my first pain chocolat and I initially thought that it was just like you know my first one I was just really excited about it maybe it wasn't that good because when I had it it was delicious however we did end up going back there for a little breakfast because in most bakeries you can do like a little breakfast with just they have the they have little trio options kind of where you can do you know a piece of toast a piece of baguette with a bit of jam and coffee or a pastry coffee they have a few little options and you'll find that typically in a lot of bakeries and we end up doing that for breakfast a few times and so we ended up doing breakfast there again towards the end of the trip and I was like you know what let me try the pain chocolat again maybe it was just romanticizing it because it was the first one I had no it was still really good it's it's not a typical one that you'll find in guides I've never seen it it was one that we just stumbled upon on the way to the Eiffel Tower went back to it, it was really good. And we had a few other um, of their pastries, really good. Really, really good. It's like a cute little spot. It really feels like you're you're doing the more authentic Parisian life um, for breakfast because there was a lot of locals there having their breakfast on the weekend and stuff. So anyway, it was really worth it. I would definitely recommend you go. Boulangerie des Invalides. Now let's talk about macaron. Now this is another very French thing to eat. And like I mentioned, we try to challenge ourselves to eat as many as we could throughout the trip. And they end up being like just like a little cookie that's like three, four bites. You like finish it and it's good to go um, it's made with um, almond flour and they have different flavors if you're not familiar with it it's really good outside it's crunchy inside is very soft and in the middle there's like a filling they've been getting really creative with the flavors it's really fun and so you can just get one to go and just grab it and walk and eat it quickly so quite accessible but here are the top macarons that I will recommend you having the first one is la durée now I would encourage you to do la durée just because of the experience and how old it actually is it's good however I find that since they've expanded internationally it, it feels a little bit more commercial so it kind of takes away from my experience with it because I've been to La Durée quite a few times in the past before it got so big however if you've never had it I would encourage you to do it we also did an afternoon tea with my mom my sister and I wanted to treat her for um, treat her to an afternoon tea she was really excited about it and it was really really fun so it's definitely like a fun experience we went to the location on Champs-Élysées so it was really like a big location it was beautiful we sat in an area that was a bit more lit up so it's almost like you're outdoor but you're indoor 
it was just a great experience. I would really encourage you to go at least to pick up one macaron and if you can to do an afternoon tea, definitely fun. Yeah, it's really, really a fun experience and to taste at least one of the macaron. They have a few specialty ones. There's one that they're known for is lychee rose and they're also known for the lychee rose desserts, like a bigger macaron with more filling. I've had that one with my sister last time we went to Paris together and it's really good. It's very, definitely worth it if you like more free flavors. And in terms of the macaron, I always get a praline or a chocolate situation or the salted caramel is really good as well. If you want to splurge a little bit, you can get like a really nice box. I used to get them more often. I used to use them as just decoration. So that's also really cute to do just to like put around your house and stuff as decor. You can always take one on the last day and bring it back with you because it's stays 24 to 48 hours I had stretched it to like three days and was like not stale it was a little bit harder but it was still tasted fine it doesn't go bad so you can always bring back a little box for yourself as a little souvenir but let your is definitely work worth it just for the experience of it. The next macaron that I would encourage you to have, which is my favorite, is Pierre Hermé. Again, I had mentioned it before, they do a lot of different flavors. They're a little bit more unique, a little bit more fun. And even this time, I got like a cute little tin box um, with four little macarons inside, and I still have the tin box that I use. The flavors are good. I just find it a little bit more fresh almost, and I find the flavors a little bit more unique, um, and they rotate a lot more than La Durée. Pierre Hermé is definitely worth it. And again, they have a few different locations around Paris so it's more it's it is quite accessible for you to find and I would encourage you to at least pick up one on the go to try it if not you can sit down one of the locations have a coffee have a pastry have your macaron it's really really fun and it's really good and the last macaron that I wanted to mention in this section that's my top three that I would really recommend is called Richard with a so Richard with a T this one we stumbled upon actually it's a funny story but one of the evenings we hadn't had our macaron and we really wanted one so we stopped at la durée got our one macaron and then we walked not even a block i think we walked like two meters like maybe like three doors down and we saw the richard uh, macaron place and my sister and i stopped looked at the window because the display was really beautiful and something cool that they had was micro macaron so usually macaron was about this size and they had one that was like half the size and i had never seen a tiny macaron like that you couldn't buy them individually you had to buy a pack so we didn't end up getting it but basically all that to say we stopped at the window to look and then we're like me and my sister it was this, by this time it was like nine o'clock we had had our fill of sugar but you're not traveling you're having fun me and my sister looked at each other and we just went in and got got, got one each I again tried the hazelnut one and it was really good this one was one of the hazelnut flavors that I really tasted the hazelnut so it was really really good definitely worthwhile I can't remember the flavor my sister got but she also really liked it a lot so definitely recommend I am gonna throw another worth the mention macaron it's called Pierre Marcolini and this was on Rue Rivoli which is really popular for high-end shopping again I hadn't planned on on going to this one it just so happened that we walked by it decided we need to get our macaron for the day tried it out it was really really good um, so I would definitely recommend you try it I thought I would mention it because you're more likely to be on Rue Rivoli than anywhere else because it is a typical location for people to go visit when they are in Paris so I wanted to mention that because it is worth having the macaron from there as well okay for food I have five recommendations but the top three to have a more Parisian experience the first one is le relais d'entrecote which is a very french experience now the first night we were there we we went there it was really close to the hotel we were staying at and it was a really fun experience because i had heard about it i had seen pictures of it and it looked really good there's a lot of good reviews so i kind of had marked it down as a suggestion of what to do on the first night as dinner as a you know let's let's do a french very french experience on our first night in paris and honestly we were laughing so hard i think the jet lag also hit us but we we're really tired but my sister and mom and i were so confused about what was happening so i will enlighten you before you go so you can understand how it actually works so rodez de l'autre code is basically a fixed menu it's every everyone gets the same thing you get your salad as your entre, as your appetizer and then you get your main and then if you want you can add dessert as well so everyone gets the same thing so basically you walk in you sit down and the waitress waiter comes and asks how you like your steak and you tell them you know whatever it is your choice then they bring you if you want a drink as well you can get wine whatever it is and then they bring you your salad you start with your salad and then the way that it works is that they come around 
and they just it's it's the same set menu it's steak and fries that's that's all there is but it's steak fries and like a, a I think it's a bayonet sauce but it's like a sauce that they also put on it that's all the menu is and we were just confused because we sat down and we're like well how much is it well what's the menu we didn't know and we all felt really uncomfortable asking so she basically just showed up the waitress just came and said well how'd you like your steak and we're all kind of taken aback so we kind of just answered but then we were all laughing so hard because we're like this is gonna be super expensive it wasn't the price you said but we, we ate really well it was really good i believe it was around 25 euros per person but it was really filling and definitely worth it because it's a very parisian thing to do but anyway so you get your steak so they come around with steak and the sauce and i think it's unlimited fries so you basically get two servings so they come once to give you your food you eat it and then they come back and they serve you again your set second part of your steak and you eat it get as much fries as you want but that's kind of how the experience worked it was really good honestly it was really worth it and like i was getting nervous that i had recommended this place to my mom and sister and it wouldn't have been tasty and it was gonna be super expensive but turns out it was really good very tasty really worthwhile more on the pricey side but it's okay because the way that we did this is another tip for this is a tip for you but the way that we did we didn't have three sit down meals we would kind of balance it out and do like one picnic like a lunch or breakfast picnic kind of brunch and then have an afternoon snack often at a coffee shop with a pastry and then do dinner out or sometimes we'd have lunch out and then you know like a lighter picnic style dinner where we'd go to the grocery store pick up a few things this not only helped us not feel as heavy and just like eating out all the time and that way we could also get our veggies in and our fruits and vegetables and like the picnic meal we'll run to the grocery store but it also curbed the cost honestly we had calculated i think per day we ended up spending roughly 30 dollars canadian each person which really is not bad because we ate really well we were never hungry we ate what we wanted so if you like my sister and I wanted to share three pastries, we would get it. So we didn't feel deprived either. So that's a really good tip on how, when you travel, that's often what I do. There's a little tip for you on how to travel and eat when you go to Paris. The second food restaurant that I would recommend you having is called Bouillon Pagai. Now you don't have to go specifically to Bouillon Pagai, although I do believe that they have a few locations, but I would recommend you do a, what is, what's called a bouillon. This is a very traditional Parisian thing. Don't quote me on this, but for memory of what was explained to me is that back in the day when there were factory workers during lunch they would go to a bouillon and a bouillon is french it means a stew and they would eat stew for their lunch it would be a stew filled with you know different types of meat not necessarily high cuts of meat but it was very filling and warming food that they would have for lunch and it was kind of like the cafeteria style where you have a long table with long benches and they will all just pile in take a break have food warm up and then go back out to work so that's a very traditional parisian thing and now it's a, a style of restaurant where they kind of do the same style of food not exactly the same of course it's a bit more updated but it's really fun it's definitely more of a like a local experience i would say the one we went to was called bouillon pagaille which was in Montmartre and it was really good we ended up going for the lunch time and we showed up right before they opened which was really good because we were able to get seats from the moment we walked in we didn't have to wait in line so perhaps if they don't take reservations I would recommend you figure out what time they open show up a little bit before 10-15 minutes before then you don't have to wait because it did get busy by the time we were leaving like an hour later there was a long lineup so I would definitely recommend you showing up a little bit before opening and so you miss the the lunch rush the last restaurant that I want to recommend to you and this is something I really wanted to do when I was in France because it's something that is very known it's not Parisian it's from Bretagne which is a neighboring province to where Paris is but it's crepes and so we went to Brèche Cafe it was really good that was one of like the I think the first or second day we were there they have sweet and savory but we had that for our breakfast so they often have it with like ham and eggs there's so many different options but Brèche has a very unique menu and they try to do local ingredients as well there's a few locations around it was really good it was really worth it it wasn't that expensive either and I will mention that the coffee I had there I had a cafe noisette which is basically kind of like a macchiato it's not a hazelnut coffee which I thought it was but it's just the color of hazelnut anyway it's like a little macchiato it was really good the coffee was actually worth it as well but British cafe was really worth it in terms of doing a very 
French food in a way definitely recommend it for sure and the two restaurants that I have to mention because they're definitely worth the mention the first one is called Tam which is Vietnamese food one evening my sister and I went on a little sister date because my mom went to see a friend and my sister and I just wanted to do our own thing we went in a really cool area I'll have to write the name in the description box or on the on the screen it's kind of like the Soho area I would say it's kind of like the cooler where the locals kind of go more it's a really fun vibe I mean everyone was out everyone's just like walking on the streets there's cute little boutiques it's not very big of an area but it's really fun and my sister and I just kind of walked and just figured we'll just find a restaurant it was relatively close to our hotel as well which was important for us we didn't commute late at night but we ended up at this Vietnamese restaurant they had space for us it was really good and I love my Vietnamese food I tend to get obsessed with food and like overdo it for a little while and Vietnamese food is something that I've always obsessed over and I could probably have it a couple times a week so I've had a lot of a lot of Vietnamese food this one was a really really good one we even both got mocktails I'll have to check the menu and tell you exactly and write exactly what we had in terms of the, the mocktail I have your typical vermicelli with the um, sauerkraut or pickled vegetables with your chicken and then the little sauce above it and the um, pearl rolls cut up the typical Vietnamese, Vietnamese dish that I have all the time it was really good as well and we had a mocktail that was just to die for. So the last restaurant that I want to mention is a ramen shop that we stumbled upon. I was looking for a place close to the hotel and I saw that there was so many reviews and it turns out it was a Michelin star ramen place. I didn't think we were able to get a spot. It didn't take reservations and our schedule was a bit hard to kind of manage to be able to go there. But on one day we were able to show up right before it opened and then we managed to grab the last three spots in the restaurant. So fun. This restaurant was so much fun. It's it's very small very narrow it's decorated like it would be a kind of a side street in Japan and even the sound and the music is kind of sounds of the street really cool concept the food the ramen was amazing I mean it kind of ruins ramen for me for the rest of my life I'm joking but it was the best ramen I've had and it was just really fun and it was not super pricey it was a Michelin star restaurant as well definitely worth it it's hard to get seats you have to show up a bit before it opens during lunchtime I think it's a little bit easier to get to get a spot or if you can even go during the week because you're not fighting with the Parisians as well to get a spot but try to show up if I'm not mistaken the first seating was at 12 and we got there honestly at like 11:30 and I still cannot believe we got the last three seats it definitely was meant to be in whatever weird way but it was really really worth it and not even that pricey and just ramen delicious now I want to mention a few stores that are worth visiting depending on what you're into whether it's stationary home goods general home decor whatever it might be there's a little mix of everything in there and the first store that I want to mention is called Fleu it's one store but there's four different locations on the same street and each location has a bit of a different vibe and different items but there were so many cool unique home wear home items I wish I had bought more but it was honestly I think we spent two hours in all of those stores and I got a few really cute decor items for my home but Fleur is definitely a store that I would recommend you check out the second store that I recommend you check out is called Stoher and this was one that we stumbled upon it's in a little mall it's kind of like a dollar store on crack but better quality for homeware and some journaling and decor stuff found a lot of things a lot of cute things and really not that expensive again it's one of those stores where I could have spent a lot more time and a lot more money in it but we we're limited with how much we could bring back and you know limiting the weight of our suitcases but that's definitely a store to check out especially for like like aesthetic cute see things for your home or whatever else or for gifts it's also a really good place to buy gifts that are a bit more different i don't like getting the typical touristy like magnet gifts or mugs and stuff this is just really beautiful aesthetic home decor and i bought a few gifts when i was in that store another store that i would really recommend you check out is called la grande Épicerie. it is a huge there's two locations it is a huge grocery store with a whole bunch of really unique food items i mean i don't even know how to explain it a whole bunch of different jams and like pastas and like if you're into wine and alcohol there's like a lot of alcohol it's 
it's a really cool store and I love grocery stores you know you're an adult when you love grocery stores but it has a lot of really cool unique items different types of chocolate and candies it's just like it's fun it's really really fun I would also recommend you get some of the food to go that's what we used one of the evenings for a picnic we grab some fresh vegetables some of the charcuterie some cheese and some of the vegetables and fruits and stuff and we grabbed it and went back to the hotel because we were tired and we had some of that to eat for dinner the other tip that I have is that La Grande Épicerie, the location that's more south, that's south of the Seine River, there's La Grande Épicerie right beside Le Bon Marché, which is another place I would recommend you go. It is a high-end department store, so if you're not into high-end items, that's okay. I would just recommend you go because it's just a really beautiful store. It's one of the oldest department stores in Paris, and it's just really beautiful just just walk around and look at it. Overall, it's just really nice to visit, and it's right beside La, La Grande Épicerie, and at the same time, Time. it's also right beside another women's clothing shop that I love and I wish I had bought more items from them but it's called Cezanne there's two or three locations in Paris but if you want to do all those three at the same time I would highly recommend that as well called Cezanne it's kind of on this in the same vicinity and then if you continue up the street a bit more there's Angelina where you can get your hot chocolate which is something that I definitely recommend you do so you have a few little things that you can do in that area there's also a really good Italian restaurant I can't remember the name from the top of my head but we ended up going there it was recommended by the girls working at this clothing store Cezanne they recommended that in this Italian restaurant is a place that a lot of the locals go to as well it was really good it's owned by a husband and wife they ran it run it together and they're just really sweet really kind the food was really good service was really good the price is reasonable definitely worth it and I had a we shared a pizza a pasta dish and some vegetables and for dessert I had a chocolate molten cake very very good it was very rich in chocolate it was very delicious so you have a little itinerary there something you can do you can do it in the afternoon you can probably do that whole area in like two three hours definitely worth it now of course i have to mention les galeries lafayette this is a typical store that everyone goes to visit there's a good reason for it inside there's a dome that's absolutely beautiful even if you don't buy anything it's really worth going to see and when i went there for the first time they hadn't had that the last time the last few times i've been but this time they also had a whole Whole huge section with it was a more of a vintage shop really fun to look through I didn't end up buying anything but it's still fun to look at and at the same time Galerie Lafayette at the top have a amazing lookout where you can see all of Paris you see a little bit of Montmartre you see the Eiffel Tower as well and there's a heart Paris sign if you want to do a little photo op that's also an opportunity to take pictures but that's also really worth going to to see the store and to see the lookout as well and in the same vein of course we have to mention Champs Elysees even if you don't go shopping it's really fun to see all the designer stores, the displays they put up, especially around Christmas time, it's really fun to see all the creativity and just it's Champs Elysees. You have to do Champs Elysees, and at the end of it, there's the Arc de Triomphe. So that's really fun to go watch. There's also a little location of a Pierre Hermé there if you want to get your macaron for the day. And so yeah, that's definitely have to mention it. You have to see it just because I mean it is Paris. Another store that is really worth going to see is Fifty. Rue de Rivoli. That's literally what the name is. It's basically like a four or five story old building that's filled with art and artists. So the staircases, I'll leave a few videos and pictures because the the description I'm going to give doesn't do it justice but basically inside there's like all the staircases have a lot of paintings and you walk through the building, everything is kind of connected, so there's no closed room, but every single room has a corner with an artist that has rented the space to do their art and to sell their art. So you can watch artists do their art in real time, and you can also purchase items. I did purchase a piece of art when I was there, and I'm in love with it, I'm so happy with it, but it's a really cool experience. There's even this one room where it's just like, fill, it's like a, it's an, basically like an art exhibit but it's like filled with random knickknacks and it is so cool to just walk through it gets a little bit tight and a little bit busy with a lot of people there but it's 
definitely worth going to see whether you like art or not. It's just a really fun experience and a really cool concept. And around the same area, we're leading towards the east of Paris. We're heading towards Le Marais, which is another really cool area to go to. But if you walk east from 59 du Rivoli, you end up hitting Le Marais. And there is a store called BHV Le Marais. If you like home goods and stationery, this store is really worth it. We went back a few times. I got a few pens, journals, like I bought a few, quite a few things there, especially when it comes to the stationery. So BHV Le Marais, definitely worth going to see. It's a department store, so there's also clothes. I didn't end up buying anything there. It was mainly for the stationery, but it's a really fun store to go to. Definitely worthwhile, and they have a lot of really beautiful home goods as well. There's of course so many things that you can do in Paris and I won't bore you with it because I'm sure you've heard it before. Quartier Latin, Montmartre and Sacré-Cœur, the Eiffel Tower, seeing the Pont Alexandre II which is absolutely beautiful for a little photo op. There's a lot of things that you could be doing and I will include those in my blog post. However, I will just mention for this video a few little things that I would highly recommend you do while you are in Paris and the first one is doing picnics. As I mentioned before, one of the easy ways to curb your expenses and try to eat a little bit healthier but also have a fun experience is doing picnics so you can do grab some stuff at the bakery or a local grocery store and then go eat in the Luxembourg garden and walk around the Luxembourg garden there's a lot of seating it's a beautiful space to go in and to just watch and just watch people and to just be in that space. There's also Rue Leclerc that you can go, there's a lot of little boutique charcuterie stores, get your little items from different stores, grab your food, go by the Eiffel Tower, have your picnic there. Or if you want to do La Grande Épicerie, then you can go on the Rue du Passy. Same thing as Claire Street where there's a lot of little stores where you can grab your charcuterie, your cheese, your pastries, your bread, get, grab a few little drinks. There's also the store that I mentioned before, Sauster and Grain, which is at dollar store on crack that I mentioned. I said the wrong name before. It's called Sostrin. You can see it's in that area as well. So you do La Grande Épicerie, Rue du Passy, grab a few more things, see that store if you choose to. Walk to Esplanade du Trocadero, which is basically the area, it's not a park, but there's a fountain and a little bit of space around where you can sit and you have a beautiful view of the Eiffel Tower. It's not as hectic as right beside the Eiffel Tower, but it's still a really nice view of the tower that I really like and that I definitely want to go back to to have another picnic. Definitely recommend you doing picnics in little areas like I just mentioned. And the last thing I will mention is sitting by the Seine River. There's a lot of space and walkway for you to walk there. We did that a few times in the evening, grab a little dessert and just sat by the Seine River. A lot of people do that as well and you just sit there. You can enjoy the sunset, enjoy the weather if it's warm of course and just have and just be outdoors, be outside, be by the water. Water, it's really a very calm and serene thing to do so I would definitely recommend you do that as well. Now here are some planning tips for you. Before I went to Paris I did a lot of research, watched a lot of YouTube videos and I wrote down the ideas that came up that were really interesting for me and the first thing that I would recommend is as the ideas are coming up put it in your phone in your Google Maps and organize it by category. For me I had coffee, coffee, I had dessert so I put the pain chocolat everything in one section and I put stores in a specific category. Saved it on my Google Maps the map is quite full of a lot of pins and then I downloaded the Google Maps as an offline map that way if I didn't have access to data I could still see the map and make sure to zoom in close enough before you download the map but that way I still had access to the map itself without data and I still had access to the information that I had saved and the way that I that we did it and I often like to do with traveling is I make sure to be clear on the specific stores restaurants or anything else that I actually absolutely want to do if you need to make reservations you make them ahead that way you can plan around those specific things that you absolutely want to see and then the rest I kind of take it as it goes so for example so this kind of goes also to my next tip is to plan your days based on areas so decide one day do le marais decide if there's any restaurants or coffee shops that you specifically want to go and then work your itinerary around it often we would decide we want to go to that that area for breakfast we'll do the grocery store this morning or another day we did the bakery did a little picnic decided kind of 
of on our itinerary and sometimes in the afternoon we'd decide okay we want a little break we want a little coffee i would pull up my map look at the cop i would filter it to just see the coffee shops to see if there's anything saved in the area that i had done research on and if there was we'd go to that if not we just find something else so it was a really fun balance between being organized and also being kind of going with the flow to be able to just enjoy the city and not be on a regimented schedule as well so like i mentioned i think i would really recommend that you plan your your itinerary based on area so if you want to do le marais spend one day doing that if you want to do the eiffel tower do one specific day for that montmartre is a little bit more north spend one day doing that or half a day give yourself enough time so you're not too rushed and you're not too stressed out and you're able to enjoy it and kind of slow down and enjoy it another really important recommendation that i have which i'm sure you've heard before as well is to do montmartre and sacre coeur church in one at least give yourself half a day and when you're in that specific area i want you to go check out of course the wall of love which is basically a wall where it's written love in so many different languages there's a really famous bakery called pam pam which is good it wasn't my favorite but i did have a pastry from there and it was good so we grabbed our pastry and we arrived there in the morning grabbed our pastry sat in the little area little park area close to the wall of love and then you can walk around montmartre area which is basically a very artist area so there's a lot of little boutiques a little little stores i got like a dainty little ring in this jewelry shop a lot of little stores for you to check out i'm just looking at my phone at the same time so i'm looking at the map and then once you get to the church sacre coeur definitely worth going inside sitting there just meditating for a few minutes just you know appreciating the beauty of it and then walk over to place du tertre that's basically another little area around it is restaurants and in the middle it's little artists that have their little booth they're drawing they're painting i bought a little hand-drawn eiffel tower there as well so happy i have it it's a beautiful little memory and that's also where i got my crepe on the street so you can do a few of those things in that area definitely worth spending time there it's also where i had the biscuiterie montmartre that i recommended in the pastry and dessert section so you can do your crepe and you know you can still do your biscuiterie you can do a lot of things in that area. Definitely recommend spending enough time in Montmartre and Sacré Coeur area just to enjoy it and walk around, explore the side streets and just see what comes up and what little shops you see. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you're planning your trip to Paris, I hope you have an amazing time. Please think of me. I love going to Paris. It's so much fun. I really hope you have an amazing time. I hope that you got some recommendations from this video. If you did, make sure to come back and let me know where you went and if you liked it or not. Like I mentioned before, I will have a more detailed blog post with everything um, there. I, it would have been too long to leave it in the description below, so it's going to be in a separate blog post on my website. So make sure to check the link in the description box. And if you're going to Paris, have a beautiful time. Enjoy yourself. Sending you a lot of love. Bye for now.